to support positive behaviour for learning in classrooms, the most efficient thing is to get the preparation right. And there are two elements of the preparation that I'd like to quickly talk about. One is the practical, the analytical, the, 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 the rational element, if you like. And the other is the emotional, the thing that tends to kick off pretty badly in terms of behaviour management. And uh, the emotional is made upon um, the intuitive or, uh, and the spiritual. So those two elements of the rational and what's known as the transrational. So how to prepare for your rational is to keep it very explicit and use a stage of learning and change that you can repeat again and again. And you can return to just to check in if people are having some difficulties, so to, again, to diffuse any um, frustrations or to remind people of a time when you were working well with each other. So the process is called the pupa process, and it's an acronym, because I know how much teachers love an acronym, is what is our purpose today? Why, why are we doing math? Why are we here? Why are we learning? Why are we doing geography? Clarify the purpose of it, not just in terms of the learning outcomes, but it can be other aspects of it's going to be enjoyable, it's going to be a challenge. And again, depending upon the ability and the um, age of the group, then it's up to you as the educator to find the hook for them to see the purpose. And for some of them, it will be very straightforward. Yep, yeah, it's going to help you get a, uh, an exam. That's good enough for some students. For others, they want to know, well, what more? So understand that your, your purpose um, motivator is is absolutely in line with with the needs of those students whoever they are get your purpose right and then you go to understand okay based upon this purpose let's understand who, who we are and how we're going to work together what is our what are our roles now to fulfill that purpose what are our responsibilities and what are our rewards and again you can clarify this you could even have them written out or you can um, have a, you know, a, a, a display to return to because when conflict begins to happen you go hang on guys we said we were going to um, act like this these are our roles responsibilities and rewards so it's, again it's giving them a way out of a conflict and you can't do that unless you've got uh, an agreement in advance once you've got the roles responsibilities and rewards by once you understand them then you come up with a plan so let's agree the plan we're going to study uh, in this way, we're going to learn like this, this is the timeline for it, and this is how we're going to work, and these are the groups we're going to work in, or whatever the plan is. And then act upon it, the actual engagement of the learning process, which is usually where the conflict uh, manifests itself because people are feeling uh, disengaged or confused, and this is a way of observing that behaviour, whether or not it's face-to-face uh, -face or, or online, then the, the, the same process will help manage that behavior and that level of engagement. And then finally, um, the evaluation, which is an ongoing element of this. So checking in, checking up, you know, finding out what's working, what you need to keep, what you need to develop, what you need to um, let go and embed it. And then we, we evaluate and then we embed it by going through the process again. So if you can bring that language of learning as part of the structure for every lesson, that will help your behavior. And then the second element of this is the transrational or the, the development of character, because what you will need through the process of this is to be open, to be kind, to be the change, actively engage in the change or learning process, to um, believe the evidence and be able to um, change your, your behaviors and change your mind if need be, and to be consistent. So you can use that language to say, okay, we need to be open here. How open are you um, to this? Um, how kind are you? So you can use that language if someone's behavior is beginning to, to, to kick off, to ask them, you know, is, was that kind? Were you open? What closed you down? Um, um, w were you a little inconsistent there? So you can, you can use these as a way of, again, returning to that contract, if you like, in terms of behavior management that you've set up either explicitly or implicitly. And finally, one uh, interesting thing from a system's point of view, these five aspects of character or the transrational fit in very well with the, the rational uh, process because the, when you're clarifying your purpose, you need to be open. Um, when you are understanding roles and responsibilities and rewards, you need to be kind. When you're developing the plan, 
you uh, need to be the change. When you are um, acting upon the, the um, plan and doing the learning, you need to believe the emerging evidence and be critical about that and have some reflective process. And when you want to um, evaluate this, you need to be consistent. And those rational and transrational skills, if they are introduced at the beginning of any learning experience and repeated throughout it, will always give you a framework for not only sort of managing the conflict, but using it to your advantage and using it as a means of developing the competencies, both the academic and the practical, as well as the emotional and the spiritual of your children.